Business, by using feminism, has managed to convince women to want, demand and fight for wage slavery. They persuaded women that freedom lies in this slavery, and have even made women believe that they are independent by being dependent on the job. They persuaded the elite group of people who have not had to work to survive into throwing off their privilege and free time, their quality of life and the needs of their families, and trade it all in for the treadmill of work. If you can look at all the family tax credit systems and that type of thing, and payments to encourage uh, the childcare facilities and that sort of thing, then obviously that's the route that they're taking. Um, and if it appeals to women, and women have been told and brainwashed over the years that you've got to go back out to work, and they have been brainwashed, um, and there's all these childcare facilities as well, um, then you end up with a society that's, that's moving along that line of its own volition. Government has used feminism to grow larger in power by attempting to act as a replacement for men and fathers. By splitting up men and women, and by deliberately failing to support family, government has ensured that women stop looking to men for support and reach out to government instead. Amy, are you getting enough from the state? I don't think I am, no. What do you get at the moment? Just, uh, Pardon? What, what sort what? of I'll get about, help do I'll you get? get? I'll get housing benefit and income support. Government pro policy of not supporting the family. One father, one mother, under one roof with its biological children. That's no longer supported. You have the radical feminists who are pushing uh, to exclude men from the family. That's one of their avowed aims. It, we want men out of the family. We are, unfortunately, we are described as the enemy. By drafting equality laws and lying about the treatment of women at work, government has enraged women and made them even more determined to regard men as the enemy, to compete against men, and to flood into the workforce. To outlaw discrimination against you if you're black, if you're a woman, men who work full time still earn 40% more per hour than women who work part time. We're going to tackle sexism in the city. Female vote is, tends to be the moving vote. When you go back past uh, previous elections, the male vote tends to face, stay fairly static. The female vote is the one that shifts. So if they can shift that female vote into their camp, and it means giving them whatever it is they need to give them to keep them there, then that's what they'll do. It's only politics. But government's aim has never been to make women happier or improve their lives. Just as with business, its aim has always been to get more economic use out of women by removing them from their children and putting them to work. And this is sold to women as a positive thing for families, and women are stupid enough to swallow it and ask for more. Maybe if they gave us a little bit more leeway with childcare and the whole area around childcare, then maybe we could go back and support our family. But under Labour, breakfast and after school clubs like this one would guarantee affordable childcare before and after school. It is not about children being abandoned in schools for 10 hours a day all year round. Parents can drop their children off 7 o'clock in the, in the morning, don't have to pick them up till 6 o'clock in the evening. Tony Blair thinks this is a model for the rest of the country. He wants to introduce this in every primary school right across the country, and he says he can do it within five years. Government doesn't even try to hide what they're doing, and they're brazen enough to tell everyone, but women still don't get it. Fairness is important for our economy. An economy which sees no one pushed to the margins or excluded brings the widest pool of workers to employers, brings the widest pool of workers to employers, brings the widest pool of workers to employers. Being a housewife or a full-time mum or homemaker, however you want to describe it, is a great privilege that women have enjoyed, made possible by the work of men. It's a badge of honour and success for a woman to be called a housewife. It's not an insult. Yet somehow, Business and government are convinced women that not having a job is somehow demeaning. The feminist ideology opposes families because they see uh, family situation as um, families as situations wherein women are oppressed to stay at home to look after the children, whereas men get all the goodies trundling out to work. Um, but in fact, well, I mean, the, the truth is very much the opposite. But historically, uh, the men have been the workhorses who have had to go out to work to support their families. And uh, women saw themselves very much as privileged to be able to stay at home and to have a man look after them. Most people on this planet aspire to a situation where they no longer need to work for a living. But somehow, women have been persuaded to give this up in favour of wage slavery. 
Feminism must be seen as possibly the most fantastically successful piece of PR ever conceived and executed. And that's not all that's been done. The female contraceptive pill introduced in the 1960s was the major enabler to force women into the workplace. Women like to believe that the pill was about sexual liberation for women. It wasn't. The pill allowed women to control their fertility so that they could enter the workforce without unpredictable pregnancy. In other words, the pill made women more useful to business and more employable. It made women more like men. The pill, combined with the female politics of the time, was the spark and fuel of feminism. I'll never forget when I turned the corner at the Hotel Plaza. I could not see to the end. It was the most exciting day. It was the time that the women's movement became a movement. The ideas and plans of business and government to properly exploit women by putting them to work truly came to fruition during this period. The key was to make women angry. Government and business found this very easy to do. The campaign in the United States is another stage in a long fight. Since the start of the century, women have been battling attitudes that hold them back. Yet around the world, half the people still can't enjoy all the freedoms the other half take for granted. Newspapers and television broadcasting in the 70s was dominated by feminist journalists. This enabled the hateful and biased views of feminism to become mainstream. The most successful part of it is that at that point in the, in the 70s, if you think about it, the majority of women who were journalists internationally were very heavy radical feminists. So they had the women's pages. And of course, male journalists, and male editors, seeing it as, in quotes, a woman's problem, left it to them. And very quickly, there was a savage kind of censorship. And anybody who dared argue was in very serious trouble. If you don't agree with us, you are against us. It's a politically correct game. It's intimidating, intimidating. You cannot speak your mind because you are deemed to be offending people. Uh, and the only people you can offend uh, with impunity are men, particularly white, heterosexual men. You've got everything of those. That Everything is stacked against you. They obviously put a great deal of effort into moving outside of the status of victims. But what they've got now is all the advantages and and protection that comes with the status of victims when they're not actually victims anymore. Um, and they would say themselves that they're not victims, and yet they claim all the powers of victims, so you can do no wrong. Whenever uh, men try to speak out or articles are written that in some way oppose the feminist agenda, women's groups, women's lobby groups, will stir up in their gullible female supporters hysteria, and they will claim and they will um, argue that the um, attacks that are made on the feminist movement and on the female point of view create a climate of fear amongst the vulnerable females in the community and therefore they should not be articulated at all. The problem is that they still think of any comment from a man or any, any attempt of a man to gain power has been at the expense of women. So men are kind of be, are being hobbled in trying to, to gain power for themselves because any man gaining power is gaining power at the expense of women across the board. So in other words, the very act of protesting against the feminist movement is deemed by them to be uh, creating a climate of fear. So men must not speak in case those women who happen to be vulnerable out there hear you. No man can help themselves because when a man does that, they're taking it away from women. Why was it female psychology that took over, if you like? Well, firstly, they were in charge of publishing. They spend 70% of the money. They are, um, therefore, very important um, from the point of view, say, newspapers and, uh, and the media in general with selling their wares. They will lobby companies and suggest that if they are supporting um, views which are inconsistent with the feminist movement, they are supporting abuse against women. So what women do is they can be oppressive, uh, and as we've seen with fathers' rights, um, they are being oppressive, but they will never even think of themselves as being oppressive. They won't even imagine that they're being oppressive because in their mind, in their world, they're victims, and they're still victims. For the last goodness knows how many years, time and time again, one would read in the newspapers that the laws were somehow biased against women. Can you believe it? Lawyers, 
you know, A, B, C down to Z would write about how women were unfairly treated with regard to the, the, the alimony, their alimony and divorce and what have you. Uh, Baroness Kennedy, Eleanor Kennedy, and people like that. They would proudly proclaim who they were and what their, and what their objectives were. Two years ago, a barrister wrote in the Times an article which quite neatly pointed out that men were sometimes unfairly treated in the law. He didn't dare give his name. This was only two years ago. And so my point is that that's how much intimidation people feel about speaking out. 